Okay, so this quick video is going to show you how to use the MuleSoft database connector to connect to Amazon Redshift. So we'll start with the Amazon side and, and talk about some of the things that you need to set up over here. Um, from the Amazon side, we're going to assume that you have a cluster set up. Some things that you'll need to note are the JDBC URL. Uh, we'll be connecting to the Amazon Redshift using the JDBC driver. Uh, additionally, within the cluster security group, you're going to have to add your machine uh, to give it access to this cluster. Uh, in order to do so, you'll go into the security groups and you'll add uh, your machine and give it access. So we can go into here, add connection type. We'll select the CIDR IP. And it's going to go ahead and pre-populate it with the IP address for machine. We'll go ahead and authorize that. Uh, by doing so, when you make the connection, it won't time out. It'll actually make the connection to Amazon Redshift and, and uh, provide you access to that cluster. And then that's it from the Amazon Redshift side. Um, oh, one last thing is that you also want to download the JAR, uh, the JDBC driver from the Amazon Redshift documentation. You can find that here. Um, you can use either 4.1 or 4.0. Uh, in this case, I'm using 4.0. You can go ahead and download that. And here you also need the class name of the driver. And then switching over to AnyPoint Studio. Um, so I've already set up a, a simple project here. It's an HTTP, uh, you know, listening for an HTTP request. It's going to go ahead and make the call to the database and then return that data back in JSON. So over here you can see that I've dropped in the uh, JDBC driver into the project and I've uh, added that to the build path. And then over here in the database connector, um, you'll also want to select the generic database configuration. Once you do so, you'll go ahead and populate it with the URL that you got from the Amazon Redshift um, cluster. And you'll populate that with the URL. Um, you can see here I put some configuration placeholders and, and put some of those parameters into the properties file. And then at the end of that URL, um, which is something they don't, they don't add in there, you'll want to add in the username and password for your Redshift environment. And in, for the password, it's PWD equal your password and then UID for the username um, uh, for the configuration. And then you'll also add in the driver class name. Okay, So click on testing connection. Uh, we'll show you that its connection is successful. If you didn't set up the security group, you'll get a connection timeout error. And um, that's just one of the, the problems that I saw when I was testing this out. So click on OK. Okay, and then we're just going to do a general select. We're going to select from one of the tables inside of my cluster, and then we can go ahead and run this and see this in action. So once this compiles and deploys to the runtime, we can come over here, open up a browser, and go to localhost 8081. And you can see it grab data from the Amazon Redshift cluster and return that back in JSON format.